Welcome to episode 22 of Taker Points. I'm your host, Ronan Scott. This week, we've got a special episode. We're going to look back at the 2010 St. Gauls team, the team that won the All Ireland final. It's unbelievable that it's been 10 years since that team won that final, but the actual work began 10 years previous. St. Gauls won the Antrim Senior Championship in 2001 and went on a run of five in a row that culminated in them reaching the All-Ireland Final in 06. But it was there they lost to Salt Hill Nocnacara by an agonizing point. Some of the players, like CJ McGordy, who was a forward at the time, felt that the 06 defeat sparked or motivated the team to go on and win the 2010 final. This is what CJ had to say. Yeah, I think it was fatally important to win um, in 2010. Um, it's a serious, serious competition. Um, whatever it starts out at, it starts out at what, 20 clubs or 16 clubs in Antrim and starts out at maybe 20 clubs in other counties. So there's a lot of competition all trying to get aim for Crow Park on St. Patrick's Day. So there's a very, very small margin and small window to try and win this competition. So it was vitally important that when we got our opportunity in 2010 to right the wrongs from 06 um, and put them right um, and eventually get over the line. It was vitally, vitally important because you don't get many opportunities to do that. So to right the wrongs of 2006 and stop all the debate of we were a great club team but we never got the ultimate praise. Um, it cut that sort of conversation on the head. Um, so it was good and important that way. Um, it was also important for us as a group of players to get over the line in, in 2010 because we'd worked for 10 years living in each other's pockets um, trying to get that ultimate goal. It started off trying to get some goals back to win on some championships, which we did. Then could we compete in Ulster and be the same team as some goals were in 82 to win Ulster? Um, and we got that and our final goal was then the All-Ireland. So, it was brilliant for that group of players. It put 10, 10 long, hard years of you know work into it. Um, so it was important we got that end goal. Um, for the people within the club, it was fairly, fairly important. You know, We had a serious number of underage coaches that put in a lot of effort into our players. And we were very, very grateful for that as a group of players. So it was very important that we not only won it for ourselves, but for the people of St. Gauls. And the amount of joy that it brought to them um, over the coming months, the coming years, um, you know, we had a number of members like every club does that were, was on well, that were maybe getting old, that this was the only chance that they might have in their lifetime of seeing St. Gauls winning All Ireland. And it was not only for us, but it was for the whole club and anyone that was connected with the club as well. Um, and then, as I say, it was fatally important because we only had a small window. We came up against Cross and McLean the following two years, who beat us by. You know, small enough margins, but deservedly so. And we've never ever got back close to it again. So it was fairly important we took our opportunity uh, to get that ultimate goal and win the All Ireland. That no one can take us away from us because we were never ever back since it. And a lot of that group of players have retired now. So it was great to get over the line with my family, with my club, and it was so so important for every one of us. One of the interesting things about the 2010 team was that it included a couple of Fermanagh men, Ronan Gallagher and Rory Gallagher. Ronan Gallagher told me this week that the reason he wanted to take part in that squad was because he wanted to work with a group who were dedicated and hardworking and who wanted to train a lot. But he said that winning 2010 was very important for that St. Gauls team because of 2006. This is what Ronan had to say. Had we not got over the line, um, it would have been it would have been a hard one to take having lost the final in, in 06 as well. But I think just for, for the whole squad, uh, the 36 or 37 fellas that were in the squad that year, it, it was fantastic. And for the, all the coaches in, in the club that have worked so hard over a long number of years. And um, yeah, it was it was important. And I suppose as each year passes, you, you probably value it a bit more because at the time, you know, we, we probably thought we had a decent enough team and we might have thought there might have been a bit more in us after that, but look, it, it didn't work out that way. But no, it was, it, it was massive and um, it's something that, that everybody at the club will always remember. So, The 06 defeat was hard to take, but it wasn't the end of St Gauls. In 2007, they won Antrim Championship again and reached the Ulster final. Unfortunately, they lost to Cross McLean, but the story wasn't over there. They would win Antrim again in 08 and 09. And in 09, they won the Ulster final, beating the loop. 
and that set up a return to the All Ireland final where they were to clash with Clare champions Kilmurray Ibrakane. Kieran McGordy, who a brother of CJ's and one of three McGordy brothers on the team, his memories of that day are that they were never going to lose, no matter what, because of the preparations that manager Lenny Harbinson had put in. I wouldn't actually consider there was a key moment in the match. When, when I look back on it now, I believe the key was basically the whole process and the, the whole day. And that's not a criticism of what went before because we were novices getting into the final. But, you know, just staying in our own beds that night, meeting a wee bit later, we went into St Vincent's Club. And if you ever know St Vincent's, it's in the middle of a housing state, but then it, it seems as if it's in the middle of nowhere. And, you know, you're there an hour and a half before throwing with nobody else there, nobody knowing your business. And everything was just very, very low key. I remember in 06 that we warned up there and we actually cut back on ourselves to go past the Dumkrondra where a lot of our fans were walking down to the match. And it was, it was you know, it was a brilliant moment seeing your fans. But I remember speaking to Lenny before and he just says, no, we're, we're going down, Fairview, we're going in, the Cusick stand, everything's just going to be as normal. And that's the way it was. It was just very, very like a normal match. And, People will probably point to the the goal they got early on and our reaction to it, which you know probably might have been a key point. But uh, there was something about that day where it just felt right, and that you know there was no panic set in. And I felt rather than a key moment, it was just the day in itself. Everything was just key that it was slightly different. It was slightly more low key than before, and you know it obviously proved very beneficial. Sean Kelly, who would go on to manage St Gauls a few years later, was a key player on that team. But he felt that something that Lenny Harbinson did on that day made a massive difference to the performance of the team. Lots of memories looking back that are a bit hazier now, considering it was it was that long ago. Um, but the key moment for me came in the change room before the game. There's usually a lot of tension, obviously. All Ireland final maybe heightened that a bit more. A lot of emotion in the place. Um, and you just want to find that level where you're emotionally ready to play the game you're not too high and um, you're, you're not too relaxed but um, Lenny went through his normal normal team talk um, and then he had a video clip to show now I don't know whether he had planned to show this particular video clip I would rather believe that um, whatever video clip they had was broken so he put this one on instead but it was a game from back when he was playing it was black and white because it was a long time since Lenny had played but and part of the video cut to Lenny and he was trying to pick the ball up during the game and he must have tried two, three times in a row unsuccessfully to dip the ball, um, which helped then release the tension in the room. Um, and again, it just focused us back to the fact that it is just a game of football and you just had to enjoy the, what you were doing as well because if you can't enjoy it in that biggest stage, what's the point? So yeah, it broke the tension. And that's the, the key memory of the day for me. What many will remember from the game is the early goal. And for most teams, if they concede early, it's going to have a detr detrimental effect on the squad. Now, Kieran McGordy didn't think it would have an effect. He didn't think that mattered. But for most other team, it did. And Lenny Herberson himself said that the goal was important. Key moment in the final. Um, I suppose it was, we conceded a goal from my recollection early in the first half, which is always a good time to concede a goal if you're going to concede one. Uh, and we immediately went up the field afterwards and scored a point. So it sort of settled us. Um, so for me, that was very important. And like Lenny, CJ McGordy also felt that the goal was important. I suppose in the final, the turning point... Um was probably that we had previous experience um, of being in the Northern final in 06 um, and we went behind early in the 2010 final um, the an early goal which I think was the first score um, so it was vital that we used that experience that we got in 06 to help us back into the match um, I suppose we responded very very quickly to that early goal um, we got three points in a row to get it back to a draw game we about eight or nine minutes played and then we went on to score four or five points in a row after that um so i suppose that was a key turning point in getting back that early deficit straight away and then kicking on and getting the next four or five points 
and putting us in a commanding position uh, with about 20 minutes played. Key moment in the game for me was probably um, the goal we conceded in the first few minutes of the game. Um, it may sound strange, but in my mind, it helped focus everything that we were doing. Um, at the start of games, especially big games, there can be a bit of excitement, um, a bit of tension about the place, but that broke that all down and focused our minds, focused my mind um, straight away into the game. Um, I think the ball had broken between Ado Healy, Andy McLean and myself, and one of their men that just popped up um, nicely for their boy. He ran through and stuck in the bottom corner. So, although it wasn't the ideal way to start the game, it worked for us. And from then on, Andy McLean, Colin Brady, and um, Paul Veronica in the full back line were outstanding. And the basis upon which the, the performance was built that day. Perhaps the goalkeeper Ronan Geller, who had the best view of the game, he probably perhaps saw how important the goal was and how important the effect it had on the team in order for them to go on and win. I can't remember any standout key moment uh, that particularly turned the game or not. Um, I think just once they got the early goal, we were more or less in control for the rest of the game and half time came and you know we got a, got a really good start after half time. So I couldn't, I've never watched the game back, so I can't pinpoint one particular moment, but uh, we just seemed to be all in, in control throughout the game, so. The 2010 victory was built over 10 years of hard work. But for CJ McGordy, there was something that St Gauls had been doing in those 10 years that made a big, a big effect on the game and a big effect on the way they played and how they were able to control the match. This is what he said was one of the key key parts of their victory. I suppose another key turning point was in the second half our game management was very, very good when they were trying to get back into the game. And I suppose the Kilmacud Sevens um, being down all them years and have a lot of boys experience of the sevens competition we kept the ball very well and on a big pitch with Crow, like Crow Park um, we kept the ball um, they absorbed a lot of energy trying to get the ball from us and we just took our scores at the right times um, so probably the key turning point was just getting back the early deficit very quickly and used our experience that we got in 06 along with our experience that we got in Kilmacud sevens over the years. Kevin Niblock was one of the star forwards in that team. He scored two points in that final. However, he puts a lot of credit on the fullback line and on the defence for how they control the game. I think the key moment of the match uh, was how we responded after the goal. When you can see the goal that early on in our final, it's very easy for the doubts to creep in. Um, but the defenders got completely on top of their men. Midfield started to, to dominate and allowed us forwards really to uh, put our mark down on the game between that fifth Really in 15th minute. After the early scare in the game, St Gauls took control and eventually cruised to victory. As the game neared the end, players like Kevin Niblock took a, took a moment just to enjoy the experience. This is what Kevin said. My fondest memory of the match probably was the last few minutes. Um, in honesty, probably shouldn't have been, um, but just the nature. Uh, of the way the match was, I, I allowed myself to, to be convinced we'd won it this time um, and I did allow myself to you know, to think of, of all the hard work it took from all of us to get there. Um, I suppose I missed a lot of the celebrations directly after the match um, and got involved obviously uh, for a few days after but uh, those last few minutes when you're actually still out there in the field um, and it's, it's not very often I suppose in the nature of an hour and final it. You can take that wee time just to, to reflect and maybe have a wee look around and maybe things you shouldn't be doing, but um, you know, I'm glad I'm glad I did do them now. When the final whistle went, madness ensued. Players rushed to grab each other, they looked for their families in the stands, the crowd rushed onto the field. And players like CJ McGordy relished that moment where he celebrated with his brothers and with his father and with his family. And this is what CJ said. What was my favourite moment of the final? Uh, it's hard to describe um, favourite moments. It was there was a lot of favourite moments during that day. Um, I suppose driving in the Crow Park. Um, in 06 we maybe got a wee bit carried away with it, but again driving down Crow Park on St Patrick's Day, um, down Jones's Road, people from your club outside the bus, and it's it's an unreal experience. And I suppose that was one part of the day that I enjoyed very much. Um, suppose the match was a bit of a blur. 
um, there and then. Um, we were comfortable enough and it was actually great that we could enjoy the last five minutes of it, knowing that we were going to win. Um, another favourite moment was seeing my family um, after the match. You know, I played, been very lucky to play with my two brothers um, and won in All-Ireland with them. Um, I suppose seeing my dad as well, who helped a lot of the boys throughout the team um, at underage level. So he engrossed a lot of work into that team as well and seeing him at the end and the joy that it brought him and my family and my mum um, was another great moment for me. Um, down the road in the bus was absolutely fantastic. You know, just the crack, I suppose, we'd put 10 really, really hard years and lived in each other's pockets um, to get to this moment. Um, and I suppose then probably the best moment of the day was coming down the lane and at St Gauls at Milltown and seeing people of all ages from seven years old to seven years old that the joy that it brought them um, coming into the clubhouse you know it re the hairs were standing in the back of my neck and still are just trying to describe it um, and it's something that I will never ever forget so coming into that clubhouse with all the people that we grew up with and all the people that we're you know connected with and uh, St Gauls is a lot more in a club and it was great to bring that joy to so many people for so many months and so many years. Um, so all them were absolutely fantastic moments and the days after were absolutely great too. Perhaps it's no surprise too that CJ's brother Kieran also remembers meeting up with his family. And he also agrees that the win meant so much not just to the players but to the whole club. I suppose the bad memory of that day is... Just what it meant to so many people. I suppose you start with the players being in the middle of Crow Park uh, when the final whistle went with people who you'd soldiered on with for a long time and fulfilling an ambition. Some of the felt was within us, but we obviously hadn't got there yet. Uh, it was very special. Within the, that special group of players, there were, I think there's nine sets of brothers, so it probably meant a wee bit more for people who were playing alongside their brothers. Um, but even... You know, within the group, I know it's a stupid or an old cliche, but it was like a family. There were plenty of fallouts in between, plenty of bad days, plenty of soul searching. And, you know, to get the ultimate prize in club football, that was a special memory. I suppose the next part is the memory of seeing your family and your friends and other club members. We well, obviously had the cut percent at Nogan stand and we brought over to Cusick stand where a lot of the, the supporters were and it was very clear to see what it meant to so many people. I think, you know, that's a great thing about club football that so many people can say that they contributed in some sort of way to winning that. We were the lucky ones on the pits but you people there who had coasted for years, you people who are caught in the pits, people behind the scene doing the logistics, uh, your people who are, uh, you know, any small chore within the club that they're willing to do and at County, that's a given where a lot of these things will be set in place, but at club, it takes the volunteers to do that. And if they all weren't in place, well, then there's no all in club. And that's, you know, a special memory too, that everybody there contributed in some sort of way to win in the All-Ireland. And probably an another memory is just on the pits, that, you know, people getting their photographs with their family and obviously father was there and getting a photograph of two brothers in Crook Park with some we'd all dreamed of. Um... You know, it was special for, for different people. You, you look back at other people's photographs and you see Carl Stewart, who's obviously a top player, and his father was on the management panel, and his son. So even though there was maybe a 50, 60 year gap between the youngest in the club and the oldest, everybody knew that day there was what, what it was worth, what it meant, and it, it was very special. And probably the next morning, capped it off, we, my dad and myself went down to... Jerry McFall, who was an elder member of the club, um, whose sons are actually St John's men, but Jerry's a good St Gaul's man, and you know he was delighted that we brought the cup there. He wasn't well enough to go to the match, and you know he told us that he stood in front of the TV with a tear in his eye, knowing that his wee club from the Falls Road had were standing on Cook Park with the greatest accolade in club football, and you know just what winning means to everyone, and their memories are, are very special. For a lot of the players that I spoke to. They find it hard to sum all the good memories into one, or to pick their favourite. So for the likes of Ronan Gallagher, for example, he had a number of different good memories of that day. 
My favourite memory of the day, I suppose there's, there's a couple of things that stand out. Uh, for some reason, I just remember the warm-up at St Vincent's being real, real calm and, and, and enjoyable. And the, the boys normally had a, had a bit of crack in warm-ups and that anyway. So it, that was really enjoyable. And then the next most memorable thing probably was just looking at the scoreboard with seven or eight minutes left and, and, and sort of knowing it was in the bag. So um, that, that was very um, memorable as well. And then, of course, the, the sing-song on the way home and Simon Kennedy in full flow. So the, the bus journey home was definitely very, very memorable as well. We can only imagine what bus journey was was like with Simon Kennedy singing. But for Lenny Harbinson, one of the abiding memories of that day was returning back to the St. Gauls Club and the reception that they got. Uh, Favourite memory, returning back to Milltown Row, um, just seeing all St. Gauls fans and some Antrim fans uh, from other clubs around the lane, at the top of the lane, and as you went down the lane into our clubhouse. So it was great atmosphere, uh, great euphoria. So that was that was a very um, special moment. For men like Sean Kelly, one of the older players, who knew the older men around the club, the win was a big deal and a big deal for everybody. This is what Sean said. For me, it was sort of like a, a thank you back to all those people that had um, helped along the way of all our careers from when we were very, very young up until that point where we were on the pitch in Croke Park. There's a lot of people along the way that would have had influences on us that um, were never mentioned, never in the papers, will never probably get credit um, for the impact that they made on us as players and us as people that led us to the point where we could perform at that level and win a game like that. Um, I think back to whenever I started in St. Pat's home uh, at a young age playing Gaelic football for St. Gauls. Um, you were taken by people like Alfie Hannaway, Jordy Shields, um, Paddy Riley, Jackie Webb. These people, the key skill that they had was that they had a belief in us um, that we were as good as, if not better than anybody else. Um, and it wasn't about having the best coaching and um, the best drills. It was about them instilling this belief in us and that belief stood strong in us um, for the rest of our careers. And it was something then that um, when it came to those crunch moments and those big games that probably played a bigger role than we'd be given credit for. Um, and I think that's the key to, to any team that's going to win and it's going, it's, it has to be about belief. And I think those people early on in all our careers were the ones that started all that off and um, yeah so it meant for me it meant that we were able to pay them back to a degree because they knew that they coached us and I'm sure that they were watching thinking I remember coaching him and hopefully it, uh, it left a smile on their face. Interestingly Lenny Harbison who's now the Andrew manager he felt that the St Gauls win was important not only for St Gauls but for Andrew itself. Now, don't forget that this was a period when Andrew had just been to the Ulster final in 2009. But he, and he thought that that win proved something to clubs in Belfast and throughout Antrim. In the context of St Gauls, well, it was very important because it was history. It was the first time winning the All-Ireland. Hopefully, it will not be the last. But from an aspect of making history... So from that point of view, most certainly it was very important. In the wider context of Andrum football, I think albeit for a short period of time whenever Baker was in charge of Andrum, Andrum had a very good team at that particular time. And I think it may have given a boost to other clubs in Andrum. Um, from a the, from a point of view of thinking that if they could beat St Gauls, they had a very good chance of winning the Ulster Championship. So that builds a bit of momentum and a bit of confidence. From a county perspective, I think uh, the players uh, from other clubs, along with St Gauls, who would have been involved with the county panel at the time, would have taken great heart from that win and would have realised that on any given day with the the right performance, Andrum could compete at a very, very high level. So that was maybe both from a St. Gaul's point of view and from an Andrum point of view, two different perspectives and uh, how important the, the win was. The final word is going to go to Kieran McGordy. 
For him, what the St. Gaul's win meant was for a team to succeed, they've got to work hard. But if a team does work hard, they will succeed. The importance of that all Ireland win, it's, it's, it's a difficult question. It's probably something that changes with me every couple of months. First and foremost, it would be disrespectful to say it was anything other than a brilliant achievement and a dream come true. Um, coming from the Falls Road and West Belfast and Antrim, which wouldn't be traditionally a massive GA stronghold, it was a fantastic achievement. We don't have that parish or that community link that probably most clubs do. Um, we have we're fan against other sports we have other attractions if you want to put it like that in Belfast so for a group of players to win that All-Ireland in a club is obviously very special uh, people tell me or say to me well it makes up for the loss in 2006 it definitely doesn't that continues to eat away at me 14 years later and if it's still eating away at me now it probably will for the rest of my life however it's great that we did win one that we can always say we won one and it'll always be lingering in the background that we didn't win another one too so that there's no doubting that we were a great team we played Cross McLean in the next two years and they beat us fairly convincingly and went on to win the All-Irelands and they're sort of regrets however maybe in, in years to come it, you know it was it was very special Um, there's so many people that put so much work into us getting there you know, everybody, I, th I think I mentioned it before, everybody in the club basically played a part in it. And it's good that it's there for the future generations that there's somebody to aspire to. And that's not just in St Gauls, but if St Gauls can do it, there's other clubs about the road that can do it. And if at all clubs that lifted their standards and aspired and drove towards that there, well then eventually Antrim will improve. And we've heard too long about Antrim being a sleeping giant. And, you know, it's true, but we can't keep talking about it. We need all our clubs to come together, we need people to drive on, we need people, more people in West Belfast involved in the GAA and the more people playing, the more they'll drive it on and eventually we'll have a better Antrim team but you know, it's probably important to, for all clubs just to realise that with hard work and with a lot of endeavour that they can reach there or they certainly can compete at the top level. So in conclusion, it was a remarkable story, some remarkable players who achieved a remarkable thing. And I suppose their story is that anybody could achieve this if they believe and if they work hard enough. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching. We'll be back again with another episode about another remarkable story within the GAA. But if you want more GAA coverage, I'd like to tell you about our Gaelic Lives podcast. And you can check that out on the Gaelic Life website. This week's episode, Frank Craig discusses Ashley Sheridan's career and how playing in the AFL has affected her and what her hopes are going forward. So just before I go, subscribe to Gaelic Life. We're digital now and I hope you enjoyed the episode and I hope to see you again in the future.